In addition to the memory loss and cognitive changes that most people think of when they think of Alzheimer's disease, the damage to the brain also causes behavior and psychological symptoms. These neuropsychiatric symptoms lead to mood and emotional changes and can be disabling. These symptoms are highly stigmatized and frequently dismissed as willful behavioral problems. But the reality is that they often require medical attention. They are as much a product of the disease as changes to memory and occur as different parts of the brain are damaged by the disease. In this video, Dr. Carolyn Clevenger, director of Emory's Integrated Memory Care Clinic, shares her expertise when it comes to managing one of these neuropsychiatric symptoms, apathy. What is apathy in Alzheimer's disease? Apathy is generally defined in any population as just a lack of interest in things that usually interest the person. We think about this in adults, I mean like middle-aged and younger people. We think about as um, they're no longer interested in the same hobbies or pursuits that they would have found stimulating and interesting. Apathy in Alzheimer's is a challenge because apathy is one of the symptoms of depression. And it's really tough to distinguish between depression and apathy of Alzheimer's. Sometimes that apathy is related to depression, but when it's not, I think it really is a bit of a head scratcher. This person is overall happy, but they cannot get going or don't want to seem to get going on any level of activity. What are the symptoms of apathy? What I typically hear from families, and it's almost always families that are talking to me about apathy, not the person, is that they have difficulty, there's a sort of a range, like they just can't initiate things. Yesterday I saw a patient and her daughter said to me, she, her mother's always been very active and at post-retirement just always had events scheduled, different groups, social, church, all the things. And so she said, well, mom, how do you want to spend your day today? And she was like, sleep which is so not like her mother. And so um, there's sort of that level of apathy where they're just not interested in doing things. And then you have a bit more extreme apathy where even self-care is completely not of interest and they are absolutely not concerned about changes in their personal hygiene and appearance. And so uh, that's true for both um, men and women. When does apathy develop in the Alzheimer's journey? I tend to see apathy, at least that difficulty with initiating activities, happen at the early stage. And people are more likely to notice that in themselves. It certainly worsens for many people as the disease worsens. And so by middle stage, this can become quite a problem. It's also possible, you know, we stage dementia, we stage Alzheimer's disease by your ability to participate in self-care. So you're at a later stage, you probably need more self-care assistance or you need more care and you are less engaged in that care. I think you start to see more harmful apathy then happen because this person requires more support and they're not able to engage in it. Can other neuropsychiatric symptoms develop at the same time? It's hard to say whether apathy and depression are developing together because it's a bit of work as a clinician to dissect how much of the symptoms that I'm seeing or that their family or people around them are seeing is related to apathy, how much is related to depression. But certainly we think about those two as though they almost coexist until we sort of figure out, is it just one or the other? What do you recommend for families that are dealing with apathy? Apathy is part of Alzheimer's disease. So again, this is a symptom that is part of their disease. And it's not as much a problem of you just need to be more motivated or try harder. So that's sort of one component that I hope families understand. You are not going to be able to completely resolve it. And you probably need to have less hesitation to just step in and do something for the person when it becomes an issue of that basic hygiene, that basic self-care, the medications that they have to take or engage with. You as the person around them are going to have to potentially intervene and do those things for them. The biggest thing for families though is that you are much more distressed about this symptom than the person experiencing it almost all of the time. So for yourself, it can be helpful to find some therapeutic support with a support group with a trusted friend who you can just sort of unload and process this with, with an actual therapist, um, with some caregiver coaching to understand how you can sort of manage how that apathy, how that lack of engagement is affecting you as the person around them. 
how is apathy diagnosed? There are questions about apathy on most depression screeners. And um, again, because apathy is a component of depression, and so that's most likely the way that it will come to the attention of the clinical team. That's the most common way that a screener is going to pick up apathy is the question is going to sound something like, does this person or do you have little interest or pleasure in things that you used to enjoy doing? Are there any medical interventions for apathy? What typically is used for apathy tends to be similar medications for depression. And maybe that's part of teasing out how much of this is depression, how much of it is just apathy. There are some medications that can be used for the right patient, all medicines come with risk, that can be a bit more stimulating or activating. What if your loved one is experiencing apathy in a long-term care setting? Again, apathy is more distressing for, I think, family members um, because they're seeing this person not engage and not do things. And it's fun to watch somebody do something that they enjoy. The other side of that, apathy often makes a person who's experiencing it less demanding. And if you are in an uh, environment where there are many residents and there are people there who are there to help you, you often do need to speak up or ask for help, and someone with apathy is less likely to do that. So making sure that the staff who are working with your person know that they're, they're much less likely to do that. I think to know that um, we might sort of engage them, pull them into activities, maybe be more encouraging than to say, you know, we're doing uh, this game in a common area. Do you want to come? They're almost always going to say no. And so there are different ways to ask that question to maybe get a different response, which is, we're about to start this game. I know it's your favorite. Come with me. What happens when apathy becomes too difficult to manage? When families can't manage apathy, they, um, for whatever reason, I think you, you do start to see different medical, um, I'll call them acute illnesses, occur. Ideally, at minimum, we at least want to prevent some of those um, infections that occur, the delirium that occurs from that self-management. And so whether that's you or whether you're um, hiring private care or additional assistance, even if the person's in a senior living community, you're probably going to need more hands to support this person because they're less able to do more things for themselves or engage with their care. That means you will probably need more assistance. This is often the time that I say for families who are doing it all themselves, we might need some more help. Apathy is a medical condition that can be treated to lessen the burden of an already devastating disease. For more information and resources, visit agingresearch.org slash NPS.